So today, the head of the FAA also gave his first congressional testimony since his swearing in last October. We have team coverage for you tonight. We begin with King 5's Erica Zuko, live in Renton with the new photos from this investigation and Boeing's reaction tonight, Erica. Joyce, the report does not draw any conclusions about fault or probable cause, but it does offer new evidence and photos supporting the idea that bolts were missing when the door plug blew out. The new NTSB report reveals how the Alaska Airlines crew responded after the door plug blew off. The captain saying his, quote, headset was pushed up, nearly falling off his head, and crew members sharing it was very noisy and difficult to communicate. Yes, we are emergency. We are depressurized. It confirms details witnesses previously reported, outlines the landing timeline, and explains early steps of the NTSB's investigation into what it refers to as the accident. It does not pinpoint a specific cause or action items moving forward. The report does include a photo it says shows the fuselage as it arrived from Spirit Aerosystems to Boeing, with, quote, five damaged rivets on the edge frame forward of the plug. It includes a photo texted between Boeing team members it says shows the quote plug closed with no retention hardware bolts in the three visible locations. Jimmy Anderson is an attorney with firm Crutchlandell and an FAA licensed pilot. It appears that at some point the bolts were installed in this plug and then it was removed just as some witnesses have uh, suggested at Boeing's facility and then reinstalled, perhaps without those bolts. Today, Boeing shared it's adding new inspections for door plug assembly and new signs and protocol for when the door plug is removed and reinstalled. It will also layer more inspections throughout its supply chain, have employees do more work at their assigned positions, dedicate days toward improving quality, and launch an independent assessment into its quality management system. Boeing leadership says that whatever the final report concludes, the company is accountable. Joyce. And has the NTSB visited the Renton factory in person, Erica? Yes, Joyce, multiple times. The FAA also has inspectors on site here and Boeing today as well invited airline customers to come do their own inspections of the site if they choose to. Erica Zuko reporting for us tonight in Renton. Well, the FAA Administrator Michael Whitaker went before a House subcommittee today to answer questions about air safety. In addition to the Boeing problems, Whitaker also fielded questions about the ongoing shortage of air traffic controllers and other recent safety concerns. Increasing our controller ranks will help mitigate risks associated with controller fatigue. The safety of the flying public is our mission. We want to bring in Karen Kafa now, joining us from Washington, D.C. So, Karen, we heard a lot today about the shortage of air traffic controllers. What did administrators say about efforts to boost those numbers? Yeah, we know this is a priority of the Department of Transportation, and Whitaker said that they are doing what they can to fill every seat at their Air Traffic Controller Academy in Oklahoma City. They're also expanding the use of advanced training and facilities across the country, including upgrading simulators at airports so folks can train. They're looking into expediting the process for military air traffic controllers and also others in the private sector to get that on-the-job training and then get certified to be in these FAA towers and also uh, initiated more hiring programs and also more training programs at colleges, universities, technical schools to kind of ease that flow into those on the job training programs. Now, as for the controllers who are on the job right now, Joyce Whitaker said that he knows fatigue is a big issue. He knows it because he's gone on a listening tour of some of these towers to talk to these workers. He said that is something that they are working to address and getting more controllers into the pipeline. That's going to help with that. And what about accessibility, improving accessibility for passengers who might be using wheelchairs, for example? What did they say about that? Yeah, lawmakers have made a really big push for more accessibility on these airplanes, not just for seats, but for lavatories as well. So they had some questions about this. And that goes even to the size of seats and also to the row in front of you, how much space there is. One lawmaker said that it's not just a comfort issue, it's also a, an evacuation issue and how quickly folks can evacuate an airplane uh, given the size of a seat or a row. Whitaker said there's two sides to this. There's an economic side of this, and that's on the airlines in terms of how many seats they want to put on a plane. And they have to talk about that in terms of the safety side of it with the FAA, bringing those sides together to come toward more solutions. And Whitaker also said he plans to meet on a broad variety of safety issues uh, with top airline executives and leaders tomorrow, in fact, about some of these things.
Karen Kafer reporting for us from Washington, D.C. Thank you.